Uh, look down in your Bible at uh, Joshua chapter 7 and uh, verse 11. Israel has sinned, and they have also transgressed my covenant, which I have commanded them, for they have even taken of the accursed thing, thing and have also stolen and dissembled also, and they have put it even among their own stuff. Look down at verse 20. I'll just read, read from verse 20 to verse 25. And Achan answered Joshua and said, Indeed I have sinned against the Lord God of Israel, and thus and thus have I done, when I saw, when I saw among the spoils a goodly Babylonish garment, and two hundred shekels of silver, and a wedge of gold of fifty shekels, then I coveted them. Then I coveted them, it says, and took them. And behold, they are hid in the earth in the midst of my tent and the silver under it. And Joshua sent messengers, and they ran unto the tent, and behold, it was hid in his tent and the silver under it. And they took them out of the midst of the tent and brought them unto Joshua and unto all the children of Israel and laid them out before the Lord. And Joshua and all Israel with him took Achan the son of Zerah and the silver and the garment, and the, wedge of, and the wedge of gold, and his sons, and his daughters, and his oxen, and his asses, and his sheep, and his tent, and all that he had. And they brought them unto the valley of Achor. And verse 25, And Joshua said, Why hast thou troubled us? The Lord shall trouble thee this day. And all of Israel stoned him with stones, and burned them with fire, after they had stoned them with stones. So, um, my, uh, the title of my sermon today is this. I saw, I coveted and took. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the opportunity to preach. Uh, please just fill me with your Holy Spirit. Uh, please allow me to uh, preach your word uh, as you'd like me to preach. And please uh, allow everyone to... Uh, to listen attentively, and um, in Jesus' name I pray, Amen. Amen. Uh, first of all, I'd like to take the opportunity to uh, thank, to thank um, you know, Show of Faith and, and Brother Shaw for the opportunity to preach here, and um, yeah, just again, just, you know, thank you so much for organising this mission trip, really, really appreciate it, we're having a great time, lots of salvations. Amen. So, um, yeah, so... Um, the title of my sermon tonight is I Saw, I Coveted, and Took. And um, as we clearly see in this passage, um, you know, first you see, and then you covet, and then you take. And I want to preach today about the wickedness of stealing. And, uh, you know, this is something that I've been thinking about for, for quite a while. Uh, you know, stealing is just such a wicked sin. And... Um, you know, God just expects us, if you look at, uh, let, me just, let me just show you verse 11 here, if you go back to verse 11, Israel has sinned, and they have also transgressed my covenant, which I commanded them, but they have even taken of the accursed thing, and have also stolen and assembled also, and they have put it among, uh, even among their own stuff. So, what they've done is, one of the things that they've done here is they've stolen, and that's not God. God, expect, God expects us not to steal, and God expects us that, you know, if we get something that's not ours, then we don't just take it, we just, you know, give it back to the rightful owner, and that's what God expects of, of, of us Christians. Okay, right. Yeah. Okay, so, um, why have I been thinking about, about stealing? Well, um, a couple of weeks ago, I, I was uh, in my home, home country, so I was, uh, I was born in, uh, in a place called Transylvania, which is in, in Romania, I'm Hungarian, and then uh, so I grew up there, and, I, and then the rest of my childhood, so after I was 11, I moved to the UK, so I lived in the UK for, for, for a long time now, but um, yeah, I, I've just been thinking about it after my recent trip a couple of weeks ago to, to, uh, to Transylvania, and you know what, stealing is rampant there, but you know where stealing is also rampant? In Africa. Right. In Africa. Right. And, and, and let me just, I just have some statistics here for you. So I'm going to read the number, well, six of the most common, um, uh, um, uh, right. six of the, of the uh, most common crimes in South Africa. So number one is burglaries with no contact. So that's when you get, your home gets burgled and you 
don't get beaten up, but your home gets broken, broken into. 1.1 million households, 1.6 million occurrences. I mean, that, that just, that's crazy. So that's by far the most common crime that occurs in South Africa. The second most common is robbery with contact. So that's when you get basically beaten up uh, in your house. I mean, just imagine that. That's horrific. You get beaten up in your own house. A lot of times it's, it's, it's you know, children, women, to get beaten up in your own house. And your car, your car gets stolen, or something gets stolen in your house, or your jewelry, things like that. Two hundred thousand. Theft of motor vehicle, seventy-three thousand. Assault, sixty-eight thousand. But so far, number one, two, and three, they're all they're, they're all about stealing. So they all involve stealing. And then you have assault. Number five, yeah, assault, sixty-eight thousand. Number five, deliberate damage to dwellings. You just, people just damage your home. You know why, why that happens? It's probably because of covetousness. So people are thinking, I should have that, I don't have something that I should have, and they have it, and therefore I'm going to damage it, because I'm just covetous. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's where it comes from. And the murder, 16,000, you, you can also say that you, know, you, you, you hate somebody because, uh, and then you murder them because of the fact that you're, you're you know, it can also be linked with covetousness in a way, if you, if you like to, but, but those, you know, four out of the five, are linked to covetousness and, and stealing, and, you know, theft and robbery. So my first point on this is uh, number one. So how does God feel about it? How does God feel about robbery and stealing? And in this in, in this situation in Joshua chapter seven, the guy gets killed. The guy gets stoned. And okay, it's, you know, you could say that it's also other things they've taken up the accursed thing, etc. And they've also stolen. So stealing is one of the things, but the guy gets, but the guy gets, you know, stolen, stolen, and then burned. Turn over to Second Kings, chapter five. I'm going to read from Second Kings, chapter five, verse twenty to twenty-seven. So, yeah, this is a story about a guy called Gehazi. He says, but Gehazi, the servant of Elisha, the man of God, said, Behold, my master spared Naaman, the Syrian, in not receiving at his hands that which, he, uh, that which he brought, but as the Lord liveth, I will run after him and take some lot of him. And Gehazi followed after Naaman, and when Naaman saw him running after him, he lighted down from the chariot to meet him and said, Is all well? And he said, All is well, my master. My master hath sent me, saying, Behold, even now there be come to me from, the, from Mount Ephraim two young men of the sons of the prophets. Give them, I pray thee, a talent of silver and two changes of garments. And Naaman said, Be content, take two talents. And he urged him and bound two talents of silver in two bags and two changes of garments, and laid them upon two of, of his servants, and they bare them before him. And when he came to the tower, he took, from them, he, he, uh, took them from their hands, and bestowed them in the house, and he let the men go when they departed. And he went in and stood before, the master, stood before his master, and Elijah said unto him, Whence comest thou, Gehazi? And he said, Thy servant went to know with it. And he said unto him, Went not mine heart with thee? And when the man turned again from his chariot to meet thee, is it the time to receive money, and to receive garments, and olive yards, and vineyards, and sheep, and oxen, and men servants, and maid servants? The leprosy therefore of Naaman shall cleave unto thee. And did I see forever? And he went out from his presence a leper, white as snow. Yeah, that's how it feels about stealing. Yeah. And in this situation, he wasn't stealing. He wasn't robbing the guy. In this situation, he was being basically covetous. It's to me, it's in a way, it's you know, he's basically being a con man. In a way, it's similar to like insurance fraud or benefit fraud or some sort of a fraud that, you know, you're not just beating somebody up and robbing them. But that's how God feels about it. God made Naaman have a leprosy because of stealing. Um, well, you can say that, you know, maybe in Africa or maybe, you know, certain countries, people have the excuse of, well, I'm very poor, you know, I can't live uh, unless I start stealing. 
that, that's an excuse and that's not true. Nobody in the world has to steal in, in order to you know to make ends meet. Nobody in the world. Everybody can you know uh, basically nobody has to steal. Everybody can make a living without stealing. And that's just a, that's just a terrible excuse. Well, it's white privilege. People say it's white privilege. Well, let me tell you something. It's quite funny that people say it's white privilege. When, when I was a child, so 20 years ago, when I was about six or seven years old, did you know that our household income was about 71 pounds, which is like 90 US dollars or something? I mean, right. white privilege, yeah, right. right. Um, okay, just turn over to Acts chapter 5. I'm going to read uh, from Acts chapter 5, verse, verse 1 to verse 10. Nobody has to, nobody has to steal. Uh, to make to make a living. I'm going to read Acts chapter 5, verses 1, verse 10. But a certain man named Ananias, with Sapphira his wife, sold the possession and kept back part of the price, his wife also being privy to it, and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. And Peter said, Ananias, why hath Satan filled thine heart and lie to the Holy Ghost? and keep back part of the price of the land. While it remained, was it not in thine, was it not thine own? And after it was sold, was it not in thine own power? Why hast thou, why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart, that thou, thou hast not lied unto men but unto God? And Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and gave up the ghost, and great fear came on all them that, that heard these things. So, what happened here to Ananias? He God killed him. I mean, you know, God just, he, he lied to the Holy Ghost. He was basically stealing from God. Right. And, uh, and, and what happened? God, God just killed him. He fell down to the, the ground and, you know, God just, God just killed him. That's how God feels about it. And he says, you know, and the young man arose, uh, wound him up and carried him out and buried him. And it was about uh, the and it was about the space of three hours after when his wife, not knowing what was done, came in. And Peter answered unto her, Tell me whether you sold the land for so much. And she said, Yea, for so much. Then Peter said unto her, How is it that you have agreed together to tempt the spirit of the Lord? May all the feet of them which have buried thy husband are at the door, and shall carry thee out. Then fell she down straightway at his feet and yielded up the ghost. And the young man came in and found her dead, and carrying her forth, buried her by her husband. If you go back, if you look at um, verse 5 again, it says the second part of verse, verse 5, and great fear came on all them that heard these things. It's about time that fear come upon the, you know, the children of God about stealing. Right. Amen. Okay, um, yeah, I'm also going to go to uh, 1 Timothy chapter 6. If you turn over to 1 Timothy chapter number 6, and I'm going to read from verse 6 to verse 11. And, um, yeah, verse 6 to verse 11 in 1 Timothy chapter 6. But godliness with contentment is great gain. We'll come back to this verse uh, shortly. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us be where there with content. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Be thou, but thou, O man of God, flee these things, and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. So this this passage here is you know is, is telling us that the love of money is the root of all evil. Unlike, you know, for example, the NIV, which says something like, I read this morning, it says something like, uh, all kinds of evil. The love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. And the love of money is the root of all evil. And, um, you know, we, we would, if, if we would only just take heed and, and just, uh, you know, just avoid consciousness like a plague. And I'm going to get into point number two for my sermon. So the consequences today. So the consequences today, let, let, let's just turn over to 1 Corinthians chapter 5. And yeah, 1 Corinthians chapter 5. 
First Corinthians chapter five, verse thirteen. I'm reading. Uh, sorry, verse ten to thirteen. Yet not altogether with the fornicators, the fornicators of this world, or with the covetous, or extortioners, or with idolaters, for then must he needs to go out of the world. But I have written them, but now I have written unto you not to cover you. If any man that is called a brother be a fornicator, or covetous, or an idolater, or a railer, or a drunkard, or an extortioner, with such a one know not to eat. For what have I to do with what have I to do to judge them also that are without? Do not be judge them that are within. But them that are without, God judge it. Therefore put away from among yourselves that wicked person. Verse 11 says, for covetous. So we shouldn't, if somebody is a thief, if somebody steals something from me, that's a covetous person. Uh, you know, if you're a covetous person, you know, you're, you're, you need to be basically dealt with according to 1 Corinthians chapter 5. You need to right. be able to have, uh, you need to be given up from the church. Amen. So, um, yeah, that's what happens today. So the consequences today is that if you go to a church, if you go to a right church, and you're a, you're a thief, you're, you're stealing things, then you ought to be kicked out from church. Essentially, you, you, can't, you can't serve God if you're a thief. And here's the thing. It's not just... It's not just, it's not just uh, it doesn't just happen. You don't just steal something. There is, there is a process. So first you see it, Maybe. then you covet it, and then you, then, and then you, then you take it. Right. So what you need to do, you need, how, how you get out of that, is you just basically work on covetousness. You, you, you work on just, just getting rid of covetousness from your life. Mm-hmm. And it can be all sorts of covetousness as well. It could be you, know, you coveting your neighbor's wife, which, yeah. you know, by the way, you know, if, if you're coveting your neighbor's wife, you're probably going to get killed. Like, if you, if you commit adultery with your neighbor's wife, I mean, the husband of your neighbor's wife is probably going to want to kill you. Right. So, um, I mean, if, if I mean, they'll at least want to kill you. They'll at least want. I mean, yeah. And that's that's what is the root of that? The root of that is covetousness. So we should just just cut out covetousness from our life. And then number three, part three from uh, uh, of of my sermon is how to avoid covetousness. So we need to avoid covetousness, which is idolatry, according to. Um, According to Colossians 3:5, covetousness is idolatry, and you know we need to um, we need to we need to avoid covetousness. So how do we avoid covetousness? I'm going to give you five practical ways to cut out covetousness out of your life. So number for, for number one, how to cut uh, covetousness out of your uh, life? Turn to Ephesians chapter 4 verse 28. Ephesians 4:28 uh, tells you how to cut out covetousness uh, from your life. That's Ephesians chapter 2, uh, sorry, Ephesians chapter 2, 4. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 28. Let's see if I can, I can, uh, if I can read the light and out. Um, yeah, I should actually find that. Um, so, uh, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 28. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor working with his hands the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that needeth. So what I see a lot of times is people that are covetous also think that they should, that they should receive free handouts, that they should, um, you know, other people that are wealthier than them, that they owe them something because, because they're wealthy, because the other, sorry, the, they're, they're wealthy because, because I'm poor or something. And that is the, the silliest attitude out there, that's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, that's right. absolutely, yeah. it's completely the opposite of what I, was actually going on out there. And what yeah, yeah. this verse is actually saying is, let him that stole steal no more. Don't steal, but work. But rather let him labor, working with his hand the thing which is good, Maybe that would not give him any more time to steal. Yeah. And then it says that he may have to give to him that's needed, so that you don't receive handouts, but you are giving other people things. That you're able to distribute. The Bible says willing to distribute. Yeah. You know, so that you're not taking in things, but just completely change your attitude. So rather than expecting things from people, why don't you work hard so that you can give? Amen. Because it's better to give than to receive. Amen. That's number one. Number two, out of sight, out of mind. And you know, at um, at uh, in um, 
uh, in, in the passage that we've looked at in Joshua chapter 7, he saw, and they committed, and they took. So, I mean, why do you even, why do you even look at that? I mean, we went down to the beach uh, earlier, and there were, there were, you know, these, these, these women just kind of, well, just completely inappropriate, but completely naked, basically. Uh, yeah, don't look at them. But also, if you know, if you have problems with that, why? If you have problems with, you know, covetousness, why do you, you know, why do you? And, and here's the thing: why do you? If, if someone like maybe leaves their phone somewhere, don't look at it. Don't look at it. Don't think about it. If you're struggling with covetousness, leaves their phone somewhere. Well, maybe they have left it. Maybe if I don't take it, someone else will, or someone else will take it. Delete that. Delete that thought out of your mind. Okay. Um, you know, if, if you're struggling with that, yeah, just you know, out of sight, out of mind. And um, so, so number three, be content. So one of the, if you turn back to your first Timothy chapter six, uh, I'd like you to see this. Uh, I'd like you to see this again. So first Timothy uh, six six. It says, but godliness with contentment is great gain. So we just need to we just need to be we just need to be basically just content. And it says well we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out, and with food and raiment, let us be there with content. So just you know, just be content with what you have. We can be happy with what you have, you have the Lord, you have salvation, our cup runneth over, and uh, you know there's nothing else, there's nothing else that we need apart from you know, uh, food and raiment. And apart from, you know, apart from that, there's, there's not a lot that we need. And if we have it because we work hard, then, you know, God bless you. However, if you don't have it, you know, just, just cut out the covetousness. Cut, cut out the covetousness. It's, it's, it's not, uh, it, it's, 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 uh, it's a sin, you know, it's, part, it's one of the Ten Commandments. And, you know, just cut out the, the covetousness, cut out the, um, the stealing. Number four, so number four is, um, and in fact, this one, let's turn over to Malachi 3. I'm going to read verse 8. Will a man rob God? Yet he have robbed me. But you say, wherein have we robbed thee in tithes and offerings? So, maybe a first step to avoid covetousness, maybe just not rob God. Right. Just, just maybe just not rob God. Because God said you should give the 10% the, the of your increase unto Him. Amen. And just don't, don't rob God. And here's the thing let me tell you something as well, which goes with point five here. Do you know one of the reasons why God tells us to tithe, in, in, my, in my opinion, is that we just live below our means? Is that we live just 10% below our means? Don't try to show off. Don't try to show people how wealthy you are. Don't try to just live a little bit below your means. Leave, leave about 10%, live about 10% below your means. Because otherwise what will happen is that you become covetous. And you, risk, you run the risk of being covetous. You run the risk of being dishonest. You run the risk of, of stealing. And do you know what? If if you next time you go to a shop and you're you know you're you're getting a discount that you shouldn't get because you know you're or you're getting a refund that you shouldn't be getting or or you know you see something and you want to or you see some somebody lost somebody drops something give it back to them that's what God wants us to do be a good Christian and you know what if out in business you know be diligent at work so you don't steal from your boss's time so you don't steal from your boss Amen. what about Amen. What about when you um, uh, what about when you're at work and you you apply for a grant and you know the grant is there so that you can improve some I don't know you, you can actually have some uh, some some impact you know you get your, your your government grant for a reason for example or you, you get an investor you know uh, put some money into your business for example or or, or anything like that. Um, you know what a lot of people do? A lot, a lot of people uh, do dishonest things with that. Like they, they get a grant and then they kind of just like get the grant and just you know do something slightly different or do the bare minimum to get the grant or run away with their money. I mean, just run away from that. Absolutely, just run away from that because because that's covetousness and that you know that that is actually a form of stealing. 
you know, similar to similar to you know insurance fraud. It's 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 all it's all it, it's all just it's all just just wicked. It's all absolutely wicked here. Yeah. So with that, um, you know, um, but of oh, that man of God, flee these things. Yeah. So don't uh, don't don't allow you know covetousness to to take over. Oh, just another example. I mean. Uh, just in closing, I'm gonna, maybe if, um, if I can give a couple of examples. I mean, that building over there, somebody was telling me that a guy that won the lottery, some covetous guy probably won the lottery, and I mean, he just built something there, it's still there, it's ugly, it's horrible, he basically blew all his money, and you know why? It's all, it all comes from covetousness. Right. Um, what about, you know, it goes hand in hand with, you know, if you get money or you get a Bible, don't, like, you know, some, as people sometimes you give out the Bible to someone and they sell it. You give a Bible to you know, one of your converts and then they just go and they just sell it. You have to put their, their name on it so that they're less likely to just, they, you know, have, have a parent steal it away from them and sell it or, or something like that. But um, you know, it goes hand in hand. For example, in uh, someone was telling me that uh, um, there were these um, flash drives that were given out. They wiped all of the servants off it and sold it as a new flash drive. And, and you know, that, that's that's all wicked. And you know, and, and it's also petty. And and uh, you know, it doesn't please God. And as Christians, we should absolutely flee from that. And we should just be on the other spectrum of that and, be, um, and just completely flee out, flee um, covetousness, which is idolatry. And with that, let's close in prayer. Amen. Heavenly Father, thank you for uh, this opportunity to um, preach uh, this sermon. Please allow each and every one of us to um, just cut out all the covetousness. And um, please just uh, um, bless uh, Brother Nick with your spirit that he's going to preach us a great sermon. Jesus, now I pray. Amen. Amen.